Welcome back to Championship Court here at MLP in Daytona. The MLP brought to you by Margaritaville. It is all about the Challenger Championship right now. We have the Bay Area Breakers who have not lost in two MLP events, our defending champions taking on the Dallas Pickleball Club. First matchup of the day. Ava Rodzikowska and Rachel Summers taking on Krista Getcheva and Jill Braverman. It all starts with the women in MLP, Chad. What are your thoughts on this first matchup between Bay Area and Dallas? So I had the opportunity to watch both of these teams over the last couple of days. And I was quite impressed with Braverman and Getcheva as far as the aggression from Braverman and the consistency and set up prowess of Getcheva, but also on the flip side, we were on the call yesterday with Summers and Radzikowska and Summers dominated that cross court forehand battle against Emily Ackerman and the Chicago Slice. So I think the X factor here for both teams is, is going to be Getcheva and Summers and how well they can control that cross court and set up their partners in Rajkowska and Braverman. Yeah, we'll see how you know, obviously there was big talk about the trade between Dallas and Columbus, trading Jill Braverman for Megan Fudge. Both teams did make the playoffs, but it is Jill Braverman and the Dallas Pickleball Club that are here in our championship match of the Challenger League. Bay Area looking to stay perfect, stay undefeated, and win back-to-back -back championships. Krista Getcheva to serve. Big forehand there for Radzikowski. You can't leave the ball up to her. That one's not going to come back 90% of the time. Two very long ladies on the left side in Jill Braverman and Eva Radzikowska. Radzikowska trying to go a little shake and bake off the drive from Summers early. So a feeling out process there, but Braverman punishing her backside. Little, little finger wag there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, you said it. <laughs> ball wanted to go over off the paddle of Radzikowska. It peaked, but did not come over. Braverman trying to get the crowd fired up, but. It's looking like early on Radzikowska is the target for DPC. And the more we see Radzikowska, the more she impresses me every day. And I think that that's going to change for Dallas. I, trying I to would target have to her. agree 100%. They're going to have to involve Summers a little more. 
Oh, wow, that, that ball just never came off the paddle of Getcheva, and Summers just was like, really? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna not gonna run for that one. I mean, it checked up and, and bounced twice before it even left the kitchen. Big forehand there from Redzkowska. Getcheva not able to keep that one inside the court. And the back and forth battle continues. That's the ball that you can't give Rachel Summers. No, she ate up Emily Ackerman yesterday on that ball right there because she would pull her hard cross court and then flip that middle. Summers with the exchange and the little fist pump in there. I like seeing that out of Rachel Summers right there, but what coverage from Summers too, as Rodzikowski got pulled in the sideline, Five, Summers three. covered in the middle. Great movement and teamwork. Rodzikowski just a little late on that backhand drive. A little too rotational with the body. right now from Getseva and Braverman aren't going to be the answer. We saw that yesterday with Chicago, and Chicago draw out, drew out some points a little longer. That's where they had success. Pace against Summers and Rodzikowska is not the answer. They want to play that pace. As you see right there, Summers trying to drop that in to play a little slower. I like them when they're driving and moving in on that fifth. Better drop there from Getcheva. Summers trying to drop the paddle head under and flick that one up. Six, six. Yeah. Not again. So good call there, Dom, as far as slowing it down to Summers. Six, six. And, and even those balls to Rodzikowska, right? There's nothing on it, so there's no pace. She has to create all the pace. I like those. Braverman do a good job right there. Keep going there. Keep trying to drop that in. Summers a little late on that one. So look at the tape that Summers has on her leg, on that left knee specifically. Oh, very ambitious on that one. It kind of checked up as it got to the net, yeah. as it got to the post. It never kept going out wide enough. Hey, hey. Great hands by Rodzikowska on the speed up from Getcheva. But again, the pace, not the friend of Dallas right now. Summers and she's got a very petite frame, but she murdered that forehand in the middle of the point. I said it earlier, you, you know, yesterday, do not go to sleep on this girl. Oh, oh just right there. wide. It's there, it was there. She just pulled it a little too much.
Braverman was down on her knees for about two shots. She's like, should I get up, shouldn't I? But great hands by both Getcheva and Braverman. One point away from an end change. Yeah, I like the first drive from Getcheva, but the second one maybe not so much because Summers and Rodzikowska time it up right there. And it is an end change on the paddle of the Bay Area Breakers up 11-10, Chad. And it's kind of back and forth here early on. Yeah, back and forth battle. Like you said, the first drive there from Getcheva put her into a good position. Would have liked to see her drop that to the body of Summers. We saw her have some success when she was dropping that ball just in front. I'd like to see Dallas move the ball around just a little bit more, potentially pinch middle, pull out wide instead of trying to hit through Summers and Rajkowska. And then on the flip side, we haven't really seen Summers develop that cross-court battle with Getcheva where yesterday we saw with Chicago Slice. We're really pulling Ackerman off and then allowing Rajkowska to step in. So I think we're we're past the feeling out stage now. Mm -hmm. Now's the time that we, we may see some trigger pulls on the right balls, but developing the points a little bit longer. Or step in and drive. Wow, I mean, but the, <laughs> the best part about that ball from Rajkowska, though, was she took something off it. That had so much dip as it got up and over the net. Braverman trying to hit up on it, can't do it. Two point lead for Bay Area. Yeah, the firefight and Dallas not coming out on top because again, Summer's just keeping them in it. See short, sweet, compact, and then the ball goes long off the paddle of Krista Getcheva. Set up from Rodzikowska right there, and I think that's Chad why we're not seeing that cross court between Summers and Getcheva because Rodzikowska is going with Braverman. And a good move there from Rodzikowska catching Braverman still on the move. And say, we'll say over the matches in the last couple of days, one of the deficiencies for Braverman is that she moves through the ball too much doesn't quite set her feet or use that split step. speed up there from Summers. Sells it with the body like she's going to go back cross court and just brushes it across the body and right shoulder of Braverman. Great shot of the pack court here. I'm just loving Rodzikowska's advancement in the doubles game. She came on as a singles player. That's what she was known for. Didn't have early success in doubles, but she's really started to prove herself the last two MLPs on the double side of things. Yes. Wow. Wow. No way. And Summers is walking back, shaking her head going, don't give me that anymore. She missed one early. I was just about to say that. So she missed the earlier one. And she was talking about that she rotated the body too much and pulled across it. That one you saw her close that right foot off a little bit that closed the hips. And then as she accelerated, the body went in that straight line. She just ripped that passing shot down the line. That's almost undefendable, Chad, right there. She rips that down the line for the winner, giving Bay Area a five point lead. What is it on the side of Dallas, though, that they need to slow down in this timeout? Well, I think Dallas needs to realize that you're not going to win the hands battle 
between Summers and Radzikowska. That's They're obvious. Just too That's obvious, right? <laughs> good with their hands. So, you know, it's it, it's a little bit of what we talked about at the end change. You've you've got to get into that ball movement. You have to create, go from sideline to sideline, open up the court to then take those chances of, of speeding the ball up. If you're speeding up at them when they're set and they're established, Reg Kowski and Summers are going to dominate for the rest of this one. I will see what Coach Dave Fleming has to say. Yeah. Oh, they came out on top on that five fight. This, Chad, is why you and I are in the booth and not down there, because exactly what we see, they do the opposite, and they come out on top. That's all right. In the long run, do not think that that's going to be the answer, though. Nice finish there from Braverman. That ball and that point got a little helter-skelter off the ball on the tape. And nice little two-point run here for Dallas. Well, the pressure being applied by Dallas Pickleball Club. Yes, they've been aggressive and they're testing the hands of Summers and Radzikowska, but they're also hitting their spots much better. That's a good drop from Getcheva right there. She drives the first, drops the second. I think we're going to have a timeout here from Bay Area. That is a 4-0 run, Chad, for Dallas. They are right back in this now. Yeah, good move there from Dallas. We said, hey, you're not going to beat it. Beat Red Zukowska and Summers by taking the five fight to them. But the proof is wrong in the aspect of that they're putting it into better spots. They're going into the body. They're not allowing Summers and Red Zukowska to get extended. And then we did see a couple of good, good drops from Gecheva that kind of threw off the timing of Summers. So it'll be interesting to see the adjustment Rajkowska and Summers make here, potentially taking half a step back from the kitchen line, just giving themselves a little bit more reaction time to be able to get that ball, those balls out in front and get them down to the feet. don't mind that that ball was up enough for Getcheva to do something with and put some pressure on she just let it drop a little too low didn't get it high enough well Braverman <laughs> hit an out ball but it doesn't matter she was able to get it down to the feet of Summers There it is again. Sketchova going drive to drop. And he almost threw Summers off. That's twice we've seen that same mistake from Rachel Summers. All tied at 18 now. Huge comeback for Dallas. You know, Braverman went down to one knee to try to pick that one up but it was good court coverage on both sides there. Control of the point by Braverman and good counter attack off of the speed up of Summers. And I was going to say, I didn't understand why Braverman was going at Radzikowska after Summers has made a couple mistakes in a row. 
That ball was jumping off the paddle of Krista Gacheva, but into the net, and it will give Bay Area a game point here at 2019. Both teams on the freeze. drop by Braverman to bring Summers up. No, absolutely not. That was the difference maker in that point was Braverman brought Summers up on a drop where she was in a transition area. She got that so easily. It was, a, a, I don't believe, the right decision at that moment. Tried to fight their way out, but it is too much Bay Area as they take this one by a score of 21 to 19, Chad. Difference maker there for Bay Area as far as Rachel Summers and Eva Rodzikowska. Yeah, I I think it was more so that Dallas Pickleball Club tried to hit through them too too much too early. Yeah. And it just, it, the deficit was too big to overcome. It put them in a hole early on. You're exactly right, Chad. And the third member of our team, Cameron Blackwood, is sidelined with Rodzikowska and Summers. Have you guys go up 1-0. You had a lot of change of pace in your game in this match that we really haven't seen all this weekend. What was the strategy heading in? Uh, you know, the strategy is always pretty much the same. Stay aggressive, you know, smart, aggressive. And that's what we're trying to do today. You know, it's a final, so, you know, a little bit nervous, a little bit tight. And, you know, it's supposed to be dramatic. It's a final. <laughs> and they started to creep back in the end. Some troubles missing those thirds and those short balls. But how do you mentally stay in it and make sure you come away with the win? Um, Eva is just the most positive partner. I have the most positive team. Everyone just keeps encouraging us to keep playing our game, keep being aggressive, and that's what we did. Bear Air Breakers go up 1-0. We're going to come right back with men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. Match point. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you going to do next? I'll say, I'm going. Say Vida, you are what you drank. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side to side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Let's make some noise, folks. Your defending champions, the Bay Area Breakers, come out on top. The first match here and take a 1-0 lead here at MLP Daytona at Big Tona. We are set and ready to go. MLP brought to you by Margaritaville. Brandon French to serve. We're going to see a lot of that out of Christian Olsen on the Ernie. Uh, 
always not the most accurate, but he's aggressive. Sean, Daniel De La Rosa has one of the biggest backhands you'll ever see. Last thing I want to see Alshon and Tejas do is challenge De La Rosa in a firefight. Because if you challenge him, you're going to get hurt. Just like Alshon took one off the chest already. Both De La Rosa and French, they're very difficult to beat in a firefight. And they're very difficult to hit through. right there for Alshon against De La Rosa or French. I like the change of pace though that Alshon did. He dropped that third. Settle into that point though. Don't try and speed that up from the shoe tops. No, 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 no. Patience there needed from Alshon. We talk about it all the time, trying to speed up that high part of the net. Has to be a ball that one is either extended or further out in front. Good ball there, cross court, pulling French to the sideline. As he tries to recover, his momentum's carrying him towards the opposite sideline, goes wide. It was, uh, it was a 50 50 point from the beginning. All Sean and French going toe to toe. Oh, De La Rosa trying to chip that ball to the middle. Great job by All Sean. Not getting overly aggressive there. Stayed calm. Kept in that cross court. Bob Swissell, my referee on court, was calling the score before De La Rosa was even on court. Uh, it's ambitious there from Olshan. You know, it's it's difficult for him as far as he can be patient, but it's almost like he he. He just needs to jump out and do something crazy. Yeah, and that's a good jump right there from Pablo Teas right here. Watch how he waits. He almost thinks about it, like, am I gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go here. And then punches that back through the middle. out of the reach of De La Rosa right there as he comes over to post that, Chad. De La Rosa half a step off right there. Didn't fully commit to that last ball. That ball will not come back when De La Rosa gets to that forehand on the Ernie. Watch him just punish this ball. Great athleticism from the number one racquetball player in the world. Yeah, French knows that he was overextended on that one. So difficult to try to roll that one and keep it in when you're fully extended. It's 
In, no, not in. <laughs> wow, almost off the paddle of Olshan. Does that ball get over? But no luck, and it's a one-point lead here. Still for Bay Area. Good attempt there from French, but tries to cut it back too much, ends up flicking it out wide. Little sneak attack with Bayer expecting Del Rosa to hit the forehand. The pace on those balls from Del Rosa is insane. But Pablo Tejas and Christian also on getting a couple of those back. But just too much. De La Rosa. Nine, Dallas back within one. Trying to go over the high part of the net. French baiting him into it by not, by leaving that hole open down the line. And you see French and Alshon exchanging pleasantries. Joking. Wow, that Big was backhand again. For an 11, 10, slim lead here as we go to the end change. And as we have this matchup on men's doubles between Bay Area and Dallas, here's your head to head on paper. It's all Christian Alshon and Pablo Tejas. 56% win probability over Brandon French and Daniel De La Rosa. But right now it's as close as it can be. Dallas with an 11-10 slight lead here on the end change, Chad. Well, if we've noticed anything with MLP, is that the head-to-head -head doesn't take into account the atmosphere and the way these players feed off of the high energy, high intensity going through. So both matches at 11-10 on the end change. I'm, I'm okay with the come on and the stare down a little bit, but when you start walking forward to the net, it's taken a little too far. Yeah, and then Olshan giving it right back to him. Quietly too, he just hits it, walks back, give me the ball, let's go serve. in the side of the face. French taking a full swing. You'll see it right here. Whack. Good sound effects check. Oh, De La Rosa trying to punch that back at the right hip of Pablo Tejas. No luck. And it's still a one point lead here for Dallas. Good pressure there from Dallas, keeping that ball down. Just continuing to trade side outs here. Yeah, we talked about it earlier that 
Bay Area isn't going to hit through Dallas very often. They've got to create the opportunities. And we've seen it in the last few points that De La Rosa and French are sitting all over those speed ups. from Tejas right here. He doesn't go just straight to punish that. Watch him jump this and just go angle. Brandon French playing really big in the middle right now with that slap forehand. Good from De La Rosa. Oshan's ball just sitting up enough. We see De La Rosa hold it and then misdirect across the body of Tejas. The best part about that is De La Rosa doesn't overhit that. We've seen him overhit that ball before, but he just punches that through. Beautifully done, and it is a four-point lead here for Daniel De La Rosa, Brandon French, and the Dallas Pickleball Club. So, Chad, again, Bay Area, your defending champions. They've never lost a match in MLP. And Dallas, they were tested in the semifinal from Chicago, had to go Dream Breaker. And they're being tested here again today with Dallas. Yeah, Bay Area, you know, there's some inconsistencies that have crept into the game here for Olshan and, and Tejas. They, they like to play aggressively and they're finding that they can't hit through. So now they're trying to stay patient, uh, but they're not moving the ball around enough. Yes, they're staying in a cross-court battle, but Olshan, both Olshan and Tejas have left a couple of balls up. That whole point was set up on the Christian Alshon return. He returned that with tons of pace and got the third popped up. Great job. a well-constructed point from Bay Area, but even better from Dallas Pickleball Club. From Olshan, again, just leaving that ball too high. French taking full advantage of it. get that second one down. Big from De La Rosa and French. for Dallas. Yeah, pulling Tejas out wide off the court again, forcing another pop-up. 
A couple of big overheads from De La Rosa and then the slap from French that just slid through the court. Brandon French playing like a man possessed in that men's doubles matchup, giving the Dallas Pickleball Club the victory and all tied up here at one game apiece after gender doubles heading into mixed doubles. Chad, for me, Brandon French was a difference maker for you. Yeah, I think, you know, early on, De La Rosa proved how much power he had. So then Bay Area started going at French. They had a, a little bit of success at the beginning. His timing was off. But coming down the stretch, the hands from French and the power combination just really sent that one home for De La Rosa. And it's big sending into mixed doubles and that momentum. Bay Area men, 0-2 their last two matches. They lost in the semifinal too. So they need to kind of fix this, get this back together here and figure it out for mixed doubles. But Brandon French and Daniel De La Rosa are courtside with Cameron Blackwood. Brandon, there's a lot of emotion in this match right here, but how important is it to really get the momentum back on your side knowing that you're down 1-0? Yeah, I mean, the ladies played great. Both could have went either way. Um, Daniel, Daniel's a special talent. I mean, you see what he just did out there. So that's really important getting into 1-1. We love our mixed matchups. We know we're heavy underdogs. We don't even know why we're playing this match, but here we are, so we're gonna keep going. Come on. And Daniel, there wasn't really much of a rhythm to that match, but you were able to create those put away balls for you guys, how? Yeah, I was there discipline. Uh, I think I never played, I've been so much discipline on my career, so it works. So I'm gonna try it more often. <laughs> there you have it. They tied up one to one. We're heading into mixed doubles right after this. Don't go anywhere. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. Oh. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients. And that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. <sighs> plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. The Pro Accelerator Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Accuracy. We are all tied one apiece. MLP brought to you by Margaritaville. We have your challenger championship match. Upcoming partner events, as you see on your screen right there, we have our PPA Red Rock Open at St. George, Utah. The Duper Collegiate Individual Championships. We also have Minor League Dallas Showdown for Minor League Pickleball. And we have the PPA Newport Beach double shootout. Only doubles, no singles there in Newport Beach. So join us at any one of our next four events coming up. But on court right now, Krista Getcheva, Daniel De La Rosa taking on Rachel Summers and Christian Alshon.
And a little wide there from Getcheva. Nice hand battle there from De La Rosa coming out on top of that one. Oh, just missing that baseline is Getcheva. Good ball there, Dwight. Three, two. We inch along early here. Yeah. And good finish there, and all tied here at three. Yeah, good drive there by Alshon. Putting the pressure on. The De La Rosa getting a little too big and pushing that one deep. Two point lead here for Bay Area. Just missing the baseline is Christian Alshon, <laughs> but that started with a huge serve. De La Rosa calling that one before the ball even went out. Alshon kind of quashing it a little bit. I like the drive there by De by Alshon, but not quite getting it into the body of De La Rosa, and he's able to put that good swing on it. And De La Rosa getting too big again. That ball will not be coming back. And you better check it for a crack. De La Rosa, big overhead as Summers is checking it. Make sure it's okay. Getcheva almost mishit that completely. It doesn't even make it about halfway up the net. Yeah, that was a better spot for Olshan driving into Getcheva, and then it sets up Summers with an easier ball to do that heavy roll drop. Wow, Getcheva almost gets handcuffed right there, but does such a good job with the pace. He's Del just, De La Rosa's, that, that's a fourth drive that De La Rosa's missed by not a couple of inches, but six feet. Yeah, he's not dialed in right now with that forehand drive. Oh, oh Sean baited. baited. Yeah. He baited into it, but he missed setting the hook across the body just a little too much oh. 
Just so nonchalant right there from De La Rosa. This ball goes up and he just goes inside out forehand right at the feet of Christian Alshon. Just wide off of the paddle of De La Rosa. So it's Bay Area that's up at the end change with the two point lead, 11-9. Again, Chad, we've been close on all three of these end changes. 11-10 in the first two, 11-9 in this one. What's the difference maker here going to be right now for Getcheva and De La Rosa to kind of step up and move forward here and get this lead back? Yeah, I think it was it was just the the inconsistencies a little bit on the side of, of Dallas that has allowed Bay Area to squeak forward just enough. We're having mic difficulties here in the booths. <laughs> Throwing the concentration off. So as they come back on court, De La Rosa and Getcheva down by two. All Sean and Summers looking good here so far. Christian Alshon getting a little love off the tape right there. Goes right over the paddle of Krista Getcheva. And Bay Area extends their lead to three. I like that trigger pull there from Getcheva. It was well set up by Alshon and Summers throughout that, but Getcheva choosing the right ball and going straight into the body of Alshon. Again, that's a real short third from Getcheva. We've seen that side of the court. Balls not come up numerous times this weekend. Just on that half that Rachel Summers is playing on. Getcheva shaking her head after that one. Not sure what she was trying to do with it. It wasn't wide enough to go around the post and she didn't high, hit it high enough to even look like it was going to go over the net. 14, 11. Yeah, good counter attack by Getcheva. Oshawn saying, my bad, I've got to get So the issue here that De La Rosa is having is that Alshon served before the completion of the score call. So Bob Swiss, um, having a little conference with the players here, obviously turned off his microphone so none of us can hear what's being said. But we'll 
take a look at the replay here. So Bob Swiss um, still had his hand up when Olshan started the service motion. So, correct me if I'm wrong here, right? But if that ball is served before the skull is called, it's it's nothing, and then it's a it's a reserve. All right, so it is getting a little chippy too down there between the teams as De La Rosa and Taya is going back and forth a little bit and Braverman also making her voice heard, saying that's how you win a point. Taya saying, we'll take it. <laughs> Just being honest. So we'll get an explanation from Bob Swisshelm once this is all ironed out. He's speaking with the Dallas Pickleball Club coach right now, Dave Fleming. And we're privileged enough to have Vicki Ryan back here with us explaining to us <laughs> That's, what's it's, going on. It's new for MLP. It's good to have a referee advisor in the booth with this. I think that I think what happened was is that we speculate so much they're like, you know what, we gotta put a uh, referee. We need, to, we need to put a in there, on those so guys up there thinking <laughs> about they know what they're doing. <laughs> but, So Dallas is challenging the call. So we will have a challenge here on court from Dallas and Bob Swisshelm. We'll iron this all out for us here on championship court. Because Del Rosa wasn't, wasn't ready. So all the players, De La Rosa and Gecheva yeah. at the baseline discussing. So we we're just waiting on that call here as we do have a challenge and looks like we may have an answer here. Michelle Bumgardner, Ron Ponder discussing with Bob Swisshelm our decision here and we'll get that right now for you guys. After video review. So the call on court stands. The serve was legal. And it is a point for the Bay Area Breakers as Daniel De La Rosa loses the hat and it is oh, he about means, to he go means business down now. here. He means business now. But he has to be careful that he doesn't try to do too much. And we see that quite often where you, you try to create things from, from nothing. And two big swings, one from De La Rosa, one from Getcheva. And that's exactly how a match gets away from you. Whoa. 
and I do not mind that at all from Alshon, just continually, continuously putting pressure on, trying to force a mistake. Well, two quick mistakes there from Olshan. And the Dallas Pickleball Club cuts the lead to four. Wowza. And the, oh the stand down and come on from De La Rosa. He was almost on their side of the net here after he hits this. That is intense. Check the ball. Yeah, good ball from Olshan and smart. He didn't try to hit through De La Rosa. He just hit that medium pace ball down to the feet and De La Rosa so intense right now that he ran through it. Olshan used his energy against him. Yeah, that's just not the right shot from Getcheva right there. Trying to get tricky on a ball at 19-15. Good, much better control from De La Rosa right there. Didn't get too big. Pushes that ball down at the right foot of Rachel Summers. Well, I mean, he's got so much power that he doesn't need to try to overhit. Wow, good defense there from Summers. She was stranded in the middle of the court all by herself after the Olshan Ernie. 20, yeah. Too many. I, you, you, you had to figure that at some point he was going to drop that. But no. So each time, Getchevich just timed it up more and more. The more I see a fastball, the more I'm going to tee off on it. And that's Absolutely. exactly what Getcheva did. Oh, what a change of pace from De La Rosa right there. Rolling that right at the body of Summers. And we are in a double free situation. Side out scoring the rest of the way. Wow, too much pressure from Olshan. Getcheva was fully stretched out. Oh, De La Rosa. Oh, First off, Olshan with the double Ernie. And then De La Rosa with the block back down to the kitchen. Olshan thought the last Ernie he hit, the second one, was a put away. Well, Dallas Pickleball Club not giving up on this one. That's the type of point that's a game changer. That's the type of point that is a game changer, Chad. And now De La Rosa, Getcheva, and the Dallas Pickleball Club within one of tying this first mixed doubles match back up. Yeah, that first drive from Getcheva just getting a little too high. And it'll be game point number three here for Bay Area. Oh, he missed what would what is typically the strongest shot that De La Rosa has is that overhead. I don't know if he lost it in a lot, 
for what it was, but very rarely will we see De La Rosa miss an overhead. He looked up instantly right after he hit that ball off the frame, and it is a 21-19 victory for the Bay Area Breakers. They are one game away from a back-to-back -back championships here at MLP, brought to you by Margaritaville on the challenger level. We're about to hear from both Christian Alshon and Rachel Summers. Cameron Blackwood is a sideline with both of them. Christian, an emotional match all the way up until the very end. But what I'd like to know is how do you lock back in mentally after a loss like Mids to make sure you come back and get this mixed point? You really just have to space everything off the court out, for me at least. Some people like to use external external factors. Me, I just need to like focus on myself, the ball, and whoever I'm upset at at the moment. <laughs> Did just that. We didn't hear much of you on that court, but we did notice that you're really doing a heavy role to Chris's forehand. What were you looking to create with that up at the kitchen? Um, looking for a pop-up to Christian so he can finish the point, and we got that enough times to get it done, so that was the plan. Breakers go up 2-1. to one. We're heading into our next mixed doubles after this. Don't go anywhere. Major League Pickleball is brought to you by Margaritaville. Aura Organic. Knock around. Pro XR, Skechers, and Michelob Ultra. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Say Vida, you are what you drank. Oh my good Lord, what a feeling. All of this joy I've been stealing. We all need someone, someone that can make us believe. Make us believe. So call me a man on a mission. I'm guilty by my own admission. I'm done, but I break free. No change could ever take me. At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Welcome back to MLP, brought to you and presented by Margaritaville. Dominic Catalano alongside me, the birthday boy, oh, Chad no. Edwards. No, I shouldn't have said anything. I he, hit it from said, a, he hit it from us all day long. shouldn't have said anything. But the cat is out of the bag. I'm only 31. 31-year-old with a full head of gray hair. <laughs> but we got one more matchup possibly for you here on championship court. Here's your head-to-head -head of the final mixed doubles matchup. Pablo Tellez, Eva Rodzikowska taking on Brandon French and Jill Braverman. If Dallas can win this, we will go to the Dream Breaker. If not, and Bay Area wins, they are your Daytona Beach MLP champions. because there's no way that Rajkowski keeps that inside the court. I think that yeah, was th 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 that was falling into, hey, I want to hit somebody that was chirping. Oh, 
French just misses that cross court. He was there, got a good paddle on it. But yes, the point before, Rodzikowski, I think, was trying to go body up on Braverman. One, one. All right, so some over-exaggerated out calls on the side of Dallas early on. Interesting choice on the third from French. That ball was short, a little higher. He dropped it in. I thought I was going to see him attack that, but he just wanted to get into the dink route. And that's what I was going to say. He's very comfortable being up at the kitchen line. They're kind of pushing a little too much, but we definitely see the mental games already starting. We're at five points into it. Too good, great control there from Pablo Tellez. Pushes Braverman all the way back and then drops one where she can't even get to and we are all tied at three. Nice, Pablo. French saying it was out by a couple inches. Call is out. <laughs> I can't tell from this from from this angle, but it was way closer than what they thought it was going to be. Yeah, good step in and flick from Tejas there. And Tejas is giving it right back right now. I don't think it's the right spot for Tejas. If he can get to it, pull that back cross court, but Graverman was Graverman's going for the all Ernie. The way off the court, yeah. yeah. Tejas, and again, for you guys watching at home, that is how you hit an overhead. You hit an angle. He dropped that angle in the kitchen, though. You know how hard that is? And also hit somebody in the VIP section right in the chest. What, what's okay, the, what's so the three going on well right they're, there? They're chirping back and forth to Pablo saying that's three that he's hit out. That's a good move right there from Brandon French with that little slap forehand, putting that ball away a little high from Rodzikowska right there. I don't know how French stayed out of the kitchen in all honesty. That's, I was watching his feet as he went across and bumping into Braverman as well. Oh, just wide ball. right there. Ball was just wide. But definitely the right spot there for Tejas. We're going a little long right there from Tejas. Just got to dial it in a little bit. It's a four point lead here though for Dallas. Brandon French tossing his paddle up. Can't believe he missed that last one. What a hands battle by all four players in the middle there. Yeah, good step over there from Tejas and a good set out from Rajkowska. I think Braverman and French got into the heads of, got into the head of Tejas there for a few points.
That good it's, spot. No, Both it, of us are like, that's such a good spot right there from Radzikowska because she had French sprinting back to the kitchen line. changing his call. Okay, no, hang on a second. There's Maybe a couple not. things going on here I want to make sure of. I had to hang on just a second. So, okay, so I want to make sure I got the call right. So you originally called it out, but when it was challenged, you were attracting your, your up call. All right, so that is side out, side out nine. All right. Now, the next thing, I understand that I'll take care of that in just a minute. I, 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 okay, well, this is the first time I've been dealing with it. If you've got a technical warning, that's an orange card. I can do an orange, blue card, oh, blue boy. card for excessively foul language. We have our first blue card here on championship court given to Pablo Tejas. Dave, Coach Dave Fleming out there talking to both French and Braveman about just keeping their mouths closed, calming things down a little bit because it is getting a little out of control as far as French and and, and Braveman is. Without there's, a doubt. There's, there's one thing about you know saying a couple of things across the net. But when you're making a show of it all to try and get in the head and belittle somebody on the other side, they got what they wanted out of it. You know, Tejas unfortunately reacted with some foul language and gets the blue card. And so, looks like we are just about ready to be set and ready for play. I believe it's 10-8. Great ball backside by Tejas. And again, they need to go a little bit more to him that way on French as French and Tejas share a smile and a laugh. Nine, ten. So Braverman calling that cross-court dink from Radzikowska out. And that will give Braverman French and the Dallas Pickleball Club a very slight 11-9 lead on the end change here. And Chad, it has been chippy early on halfway through this matchup. What's the difference maker and what is Dave Fleming talking to his team about right now? Well, honestly, I think it, it's the mental games by Braverman and French that have thrown off Rajkowska and, Tele and Tejas. Tejas has, has rushed some of the, the drives. He's rushed some of the, the opportunities to speed up. And he's just trying to do a little too much because he's try, <laughs> trying to, to get through that mental uh, fortitude that is being thrown at him. All right, looks like we are just about set to get back underway. It is a two-point lead here for the Dallas Pickleball Club. Dallas looking to win this and force the dream breaker for all the marbles here in the Challenger Championship match. Yeah, good spot there from Redzkowska. French hanging out in the middle of the court, expecting that she was gonna go cross court at Braverman. Yeah, it's a good step in from Tejas. Braverman 
was worried about falling into the kitchen. So perfect spot for Tears to go back at her. 11, 11. Jill Braverman continuing to chop right here. I mean, it's a perfect shot down the line. Okay, good start there from Rajkowska and then finished by Tejas. All tied here at 12. Whoa, whoa. Oh. And Rajkowska bunning French down the line for the second time in this end change. <laughs> we hear it coming out of the crowd. What Braverman was saying to tell you is Tellez after French got passed down the line there. 13, 13. Yeah! What hands from both French and Braverman right there to stay in this point because it looked like Rodzikowska had him. She overcooks that forehand. 13, 13. Oh. Too big of a swing there from French. Redskowska just floated that one and he has sitting forehand. Slapped it too much and it just sailed out. Here's that big forehand or overhead from Brandon French. Tejas had to step over Rodzikowska's foot to get in position there, but a good move. He finishes with the forehand. And we're all tied again here now at 15. 15, 15. Oh. That just misses the baseline right there. 15. Yeah, Tejas is just a little flat on those drives. Usually he adds that heavy top spin, not quite getting underneath the ball enough. 15. Good move there from French and good talk and communication from Braverman telling him she was going to switch. And now Dallas has opened up a two point lead here late. A good job from Rajkowski getting into the kitchen and then able to establish both feet back out here for the French flick. Is that a shot? The French the flick? The French flick, I guess so. Call that a shot now. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Ball died off the paddle of Braverman. Braverman missed to the sideline right there. 
All right, Taya is in Reg Casco. We're in I formation. And then Braveman just pushed it wide. Too good from Rodzikowska right there. She got a ball up from Braverman and she punishes French down the sideline. Oh, and Taya is putting Braverman on her backside right there with his forehand. Bay Area two points away from closing this one out and capturing their second championship of season one. Oh, Pablo Tejas, two too much right there. And here is what it's all about, a timeout from Dallas as Bay Area is up by two. We're on a double freeze at 2018. When we come back in, it will be Game, match, and championship point on the paddle of Pablo Tejas for Bay Area. Chad, difference maker here for Dallas. What do they need to do? Because they were up 18-17. That's three straight from Bay Area. Yeah, I think it, for Dallas, they've got to try to isolate Tejas. Tejas has really stepped it up the last couple of points. He's moving well along the kitchen, really inserting himself and making high quality and powerful shots and this is championship point for bay area and not this time says jill braverman as they fight off the first championship point a good move and smart choice there from Tejas as far as slowing down that ball. Braverman was ready for him to speed it up, but by slowing it down, threw off the timing, created the pop up. And the championship point number two here for Pablo Tejas, Radzikowska, and the Bay Area Breakers. That was a Bay drive. Area Breakers are your back-to-back -back Challenger League champions. 21-18 for Radzikowska and Tejas. All the talk on the side of Braverman and French is for naught as Radzikowska and Tejas come out on top by three, and the Bay Area Breakers are your champions here at MLP, brought to you by Margaritaville at Daytona. Chad, thoughts on that final match? No, I think it was a fantastic job by Tejas and Radzikowska to kind of weather the storm and stay mentally strong throughout that one. We saw coming down the stretch there that Tejas really stepped it up and inserted himself into it, but also hats off to Amy Radzkowska for staying nice and relaxed and calm. And even when French tried to step in and be big, she went behind him and created those opportunities. All right, well, there you have it. The Challenger League complete. Bay Area, your back-to-back -back champions here in season one of 2023. Congratulations to all four of those players. We'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back, the trophy presentation here on Championship Court. Major League Pickleball is brought to you by Margaritaville. Pickleball United. HSS. Circle. Bro Myth Pickleball. Dulce Vida Tequila. And Michelo Boltra.
it's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. <sighs> Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Match point. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. We're going to Margaritaville. You can go to Margaritaville too. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. Six carbs and 95 calories. Welcome back. I'm Cameron Blackwood here with now our two time champions, the Bay Area Breakers. But before we get to them, let's go ahead and give it up one more time for our runner ups, the Dallas Pickleball Club, for making it into the finals. We have the Commissioner of MLP, Brooks Wiley, to present the trophy for the second time. And I'm going to go to Ever right now because you said it's even better the second time. Just how are you feeling in this moment? You know, it felt amazing the first time around, but to come back, you know, and to prove ourselves and, you know, to come out of really tough matches. We played so many dream breakers. That feels freaking amazing. <laughs> And like you said, it's just been a grind all weekend long, dream breakers, but just how confident were you in this team to come back and repeat here in Daytona? You know, it's tough to win once, but it's even tougher to win twice. But I knew we were gonna do it the whole time, never a doubt. <laughs> Let's go! We do have two more awards to give out this evening. We have our Pro XR Sportsmanship Award, and that goes to none other than Miss Rachel Summers. <laughs> And our next award is the MVP of MLP here in Daytona. And that is gonna be presented by our title sponsor, COO of Margaritaville, Mr. Brad Schwabel. And that is going to, for the second time again, no. Ever Oscar. Oh my God. <laughs> well deserved. And well she deserved. wins the Margaritaville at sea trip. So an amazing, amazing trip from Margaritaville. So thank you so much to our title sponsors. Thank you guys so much to the fans. We're going to come right back. We have more pickleball. We have our quarterfinals with the Premier League. But again, let's give it up one more time to the Bay Area Breakers. We'll be right back. Woo! 